right? If you have not already, I encourage you to print off this um, worksheet. And if, if not, you can just take notes on your own. But I, ideally, if you could print that off, that would be easier. So we're going to talk about function families. And this is really just learning a lot about all those functions that you see on the wall in my classroom. Um, so far in Algebra 1, you have graphed things that are linear. You have graphed absolute value. You've graphed quadratic. Um, you haven't done a whole lot more than that. You may have seen exponential, uh, but it's been a long time, and you don't really spend a whole lot of time on that in algebra, uh, sorry, in geometry. So we're going to look at that again just so that you can bring some of those things back to your mind. And also, we're doing this in conjunction with transformations. So um, what you see here is going to make a lot more sense when we talk about transformations, which is why we do these two things together. All right, so we're going to start with linear. Um, and linear really just means you're talking about a straight line. So um, the equation for linear is going to just have an x in it. Now that might be like um, 3x plus 8 or negative uh, 1 half x minus 5. But um, notice there's no extra symbols in there. There's no parentheses. There's no exponents. Um, it's just going to be an x, which is what makes the function linear. So um, when we graph here, what I'm graphing in this section is going to be what we call the parent function. And the parent functions that we graph, um, parent function just means like the simplest version of that function. Okay, so the simplest version of a linear function is going to start at 0, 0. And it is going to have a slope, a rate of change uh, of 1 over 1. All right, so I'm going to go um, rise 1, run 1, and then going the other direction, I'm going to go left and down. And when we do that, that is going to create this straight line. Okay, when we say graphing pattern, this is where I'm going to talk about the rate of change um, because they all have different patterns. So linear has this, like, you're, you're going to hear me refer to it as 1 over 1, but it is the vertical over the horizontal change. Um, that is what rate of change is, is vertical over horizontal. We've talked about that already. Okay, so now that you've seen linear, let's talk about absolute value. So absolute value, um, you will recognize it by these bars. So they have these straight bars. And when you write them in your notes, like usually I write them really big just so I can tell that I'm talking about absolute value bars and I'm not talking about like ones or something else in the front of them. Um, okay, so absolute value uh, is actually going to be a V shape. And I remember that because it says value out here. Okay, so the graph is going to be V shaped. Um, it again is going to start at this one over one. Sorry, no, I'm saying, I said the wrong thing. We're gonna start at the origin. And then we're gonna have this graphing pattern of one over one, vertical over horizontal. Now it's V shaped, so I am gonna go up and to the right one but on the left side, I also am going to go up and to the left, okay? And that is what is going to create this straight V pattern on both sides. So the thing I would make a note to about myself is that the absolute value graph is V-shaped. Okay. Um, next, let's talk about quadratics. So quadratics, um, when we graph them, they create what is called a parabola, um, not parabola. That's P-A-R-A-B-O-L-A. -A -A. Um, and so the parabola is a U shape, and I kind of remember that sometimes because quadratic has a U in it. So it's going to be this um, U-shaped graph. And I'm sorry, I don't have my stylus, which is why my handwriting is pretty terrible right now. Um, we recognize quadratics by this exponent of a squared. So I do want you to, to note for yourself um, that, that that could be like, um, sometimes we see it written like this, x plus 3 squared minus 5, right? Like that, this squared is going to make that a quadratic. Um, we can also see it as x squared plus 5x minus 9, the fact that this is squared up here and that it's the biggest one still is going to make it quadratic. And we're going to talk more about quadratics and parabolas a lot later. But um, So in this moment, we talk about graphing quadratics. 
we're still, again, going to start at the origin. So you may notice that most parent functions are going to start at the origin. And I think actually all the ones we do today are going to start at the origin. Um, and this time, we can't have like a, a one over one pattern because if I continue to go up one and over one every time, it's just going to make a straight line, which is where the, the V shape came from before. So instead, I'm going to do a special pattern. And for quadratics, um, this pattern is, I'm going to come over here, sorry. This pattern is 1, 3, 5, 7 over 1. And I'm just going to give you this like kind of side note for yourself. The reason it's 1, 3, 5, 7. All right, my perfect square numbers are 1, 4, um, 9, 16, 25. And if you count the difference between those, the first one is 1, then plus 3, then plus 5, then plus 7. And you notice the next one is going to be plus 9. Um, that's where that pattern is coming from. So I didn't just make that up, and it's not just like random. It, it actually comes from somewhere. Okay, so you just need to know, though, basically, the pattern is 1, 3, 5, 7 over 1. Um, and remember that this is vertical over horizontal change. So what that means is that from my origin, I'm going to go vertically one and horizontally one. That will make my first point. And now the next time, I need to go vertically three, one, two, three, and horizontally only one again. Okay, and then the next time, I'm going to go vertically five, one, two, three, four, five, and over one again. And that same pattern is going to um, occur like symmetrically on the other side, um, which is going to create this U-shaped parabola uh, for our graph. Okay, so you might have to listen to that one again, but just take good notes and I think that you will um, be okay. All right, so let's look at um, square root functions. So remember that square root is the inverse um, of the quadratic function. So a few things about that. Remember that inverses um, flip the x and the y. So you're going to see in a minute um, what would normally be like this parabola shape. I'm going to flip it the other way. Okay, so we're going to look at something kind of going on its side. Um, and before we talk about that, let's talk about the pattern. So, uh, well, and if you haven't noted, note that you're going to see this square root symbol that is going to define the shape. Okay, so with quadratics, it was 1, 3, 5, 7 over 1. And um, we're still doing vertical over horizontal, but with square roots, it's 1 over 1, 3, 5, 7. So we are going to start here at the origin, just like we did before. And now we're gonna go vertically one, horizontally one. But the next time we're gonna go vertically one, horizontally three. And then vertically one, horizontally five. Now, um, you might think that we should repeat that down here. And I understand why, because you think it should be symmetrical. But if we think about if this is supposed to be a function if we complete this bottom part down here, when I go to do the vertical line test, it's going to fail because it's going to hit in two places. So when we talk about the square root function, we actually only talk about the top part. Um, this part is not included. And that's because it would not allow it to be a function if we did so. Okay, um, now let's talk about cubic functions. So cubic functions, similar to quadratics, they're defined by this exponent of 3 up here. Um, they have a pattern of 1, 7 over 1. And I have always put this plus minus symbol here because, and you'll see why, because of the shape that cubic makes. Okay, so um, cubic is, again, going to start at 0, 0. And the first part's up 1 over 1, and then it's going to be up 7 over 1. And I'm not specifically counting that, so hopefully I counted that right. 
you should count better than me. Um, it does not, cubics do not mirror on the other side. And the reason is because if we, um, I'm going to scoot my notes over here. If I do like negative 2 squared, for instance, that is positive 4, right? Because it's negative 2 times negative 2. But if I do negative 2 to the third, that actually ends up being negative 8. So my function can dip into the negative values. They don't have to stay positive like they did um, for the quadratic function. Okay, so with that, the other side of this cubic function actually goes down and to the left um, for and then down and to the left again. So I get this, what I call this like twisted paper clip shape. Um, because I think about if I took a paper clip and I twisted it, you can visualize what I'm saying there. Um, so that's what my cubic function looks like. So notice it is not a parabola, it is its own shape, right? All right, so cube root function is our last one. I know this is long. It's a lot of information at one time. Um, cube root is the inverse of cube. Okay, so notice a few things. First, I want you to notice what the cube root function looks like. It looks like a square root. Um, this 3 is not an exponent. If I were to write this larger, it's like the 3 is kind of sitting in this little nook right here, right? Okay, so that defines my cube root function when I'm looking at the equation. And um, just like with the inverse we did before, it's going to switch the input and the output, which is also going to switch the um, vertical horizontal. So still vertically horizontally, but now it's 1 over 1, 7. All right, so I'm going to start at 0, 0, start at my origin. I'm going to go up 1 over 1. And this time, I'm going to go vertically 1, horizontally 7. And remember that cube does not overlap itself. So we are actually allowed to do the other side because it's not going to go this way like the parabola did. The other sides, the other tail is actually going to go the opposite direction, which is okay. That's not going to mess up my function. So I'm going to go down 1 over 1, down 1 over 7. And I'm going to get this um, kind of sideways twisted paper clip. So um, make sure that you have all those. <laughs> I really want to make sure that you understand and connect um, the inverses with one another. And uh, the, the better your notes are here, the more you can use them in what we do in class together.